Hi guys, Scott here, and as you can hear, the wind's blowing. And what does the wind blowing mean around here? Power outages. And I don't like a power outage, and I'm sure you don't either. That means no refrigerator, no internet, or no power in general. Well, I have fish tanks and all kinds of stuff, and I need my electricity. I have a small generator that I can usually hook up and keep that refrigerator going, but I want to come up with a whole house solution. And we're going to talk about that today on Data Yourself. So the first thing we need to do is get this breaker box ready to accept substitute power that would normally come from the grid but come from my generator. If you're not comfortable working with 240 volts in this case, you need to hire a licensed electrician. And before you do that, make sure you familiarize yourself with your local codes and if any permits are required. I hired the electrician and he's already got the box off and he's going to be doing some swaps here so that we can have the power cut off for the generator. So let's uh, get on to it. Okay, so the electrician didn't want to get filmed, which I don't blame him, you know, that's his prerogative. But I'll show you what he did. So he took these two breakers here, which are arc fault breakers that are for my loft and two of my bedrooms upstairs. They were originally in this position and he moved them down here. They were two 15 amp breakers. He replaced that with a dual 30 amp breaker, which is for 240 volt service. And you can see there's this bracket on here. And so this is tied into the service that goes out here. He drilled this hole right here and that goes out to the receptacle. I'll show you that in a minute. I wanna show you how this thing works. What it is, is this plate right here keeps it so that you can't send power to the grid. So either the main is on or the breaker to the generator is on. The two cannot be on at the same time because if you hook the generator up and the main's on, you could push 240 volts right down the line. And we wouldn't wanna do that because you know the guy working out on the pole trying to fix your power is gonna get zapped. So this is a safety measure to prevent. It will not allow you to have the generator and the main on at the same time. So the main has to be off to turn the generator on. It's a physical block and this is required by code and by permit. So in the case of a power outage, what would happen is I would come out here and I would turn all the breakers to the off position and it wouldn't matter because there's no power. So everything is kind of off anyways. I'm gonna switch the mains to generator, so then the generator is gonna be generating electricity and it's gonna be plugged into the house. And then I'm slowly gonna turn the load on one circuit at a time until the house is back on. And you don't wanna leave everything on and just switch this because, you know, in a power outage, when the power comes back on, the grid can handle that push and that draw when your house comes back to life. But that generator, if I was to just throw all the electricity and the draw from the entire house on it, it would go into an overload condition. It would probably just shut down. So you wanna turn these breakers on individually until the house is completely powered up. And if for some reason you get to an overload condition, you'll know what the extent is and what the limit is. I personally, I would turn on the kitchen, the appliances first, your water heater, your furnace, and stuff like that. Maybe leave some of the bedrooms off if necessary, just to take that draw, but you'll know where it is. My generator, big enough to power my whole house. So here's my meter box, and now my electrician has put in this 240 volt twist connector that goes from a cable to my generator. Two days later. Okay, so wouldn't you know it, I just had the electrician here maybe a week ago, uh, hooking up everything in my power box for the generator, and the power's out today. We had a pretty good rainstorm and a windstorm last night, and we're gonna have wind for the next five hours. And where I live, wind is what takes the power out. Uh, fortunately, I got some charged batteries. There's Tyler, hi Tyler. He's got the flashlight, and guess what I got? Got a brand new generator right there, 6,500 watt Ryobi. So I get a lot of crap from my wife that I own too many Ryobi lights. But you know what? I'd say they're coming in handy right now, and this isn't even all of them, but let's get that opened up. So not your typical unboxing video. Uh, it doesn't come with a lot, actually. Generator fully assembled. A couple of wheels, those get bolted onto the side right here, and a couple of feet. 
those get put on right about there and then it comes with a quart of oil that has to go in there it doesn't come with gasoline but that's all right i got some in the back but uh, let's go ahead and assemble this so i can roll it outside it is actually daylight out there but it is super windy and super noisy so once i get the wheels on this uh, we'll roll it outside and start it up Okay, a couple of things before I open the garage door. All right, because it's going to be noisy and windy out there. Uh, never run your generator inside the garage. Uh, even though it's outside, it's still inside your home, and carbon monoxide can kill you. Uh, my generator has a CO2 O2 monitor, and it will shut off if it uh, uh, detects that, but frankly, I'm not going to trust my life and the life of my family to that. So this thing will always be run outside in the driveway where it's safe. And I have a 25 foot cord to hook it to the house so it can be plenty of distance from the house. All right. Well, the power's out. So I'm going to have to open up the garage door manually. So let's do that now. So I wasn't joking when I said it was windy. I mean, check out these trees moving over here. And you can just hear it. I mean, it's crazy. So let's get some gasoline in this thing. Get it fired up and I'll show you the safest way to turn this thing on and not blow everything up in your house. So I picked up this cable from Harbor Freight, but they sell them just about any location that sells generators. And it has a male end and a female end. And the female end goes to the house. It may be a little hard to see, but the ground connection on this cable, which has four connections, is actually keyed with a little um, indent on it. And then inside here, that ground key is also keyed. So this can only go in one way. Like that. And just like the house receptacle, the male end is keyed for the ground as well when going into the generator. Like that. Okay, it's go time. The wind's blowing, and if you made it this far in my video, you know what happens when the wind blows. Power's out. It's out in my whole neighborhood. We've got the generator hooked up. Cord's already running over to, hang on, right over here, to the receptacle. I'm gonna go ahead and set the uh, power box up, and we're gonna start this generator out and turn the house back on. We'll go ahead and turn off all the breakers in the house. Okay, here's the generator, here's the main, let's go ahead and flip the main, and I'm going to go turn on the generator next. Let's go ahead and switch on the generator input. Right, time to start turning the house back on. Let's see, that's the dryer. I'm gonna leave the dryer off. Here's the water heater. Let's turn the water heater back on. Uh, what do we got over here? Bedrooms, uh, entry living room. Here's the stove, kitchens. There's all the kitchen, dishwasher. Oh, look at that, garage. Turn on some bedrooms, the rest of the garage, hallways, family room, kitchen, living room, master bedroom, and bedrooms. So the only thing I didn't turn on was my 240 to my dryer. I'm not going to run the dryer, and I'm definitely not going to be in here doing shop tools with no power. Seems like everything's running in the house. Let's take a walk around. Fish look happy. Look at that, even the hot tub's running. Well, it looks like this was a success. The lights are on, and I have plenty of room in this generator if I needed to add more. Hey, one last thing, before you buy something for your house, 
make sure you check to see what kind of load you have. You can find that information on your utility bill or contacting your electrical provider. But for me, this Ryobi generator provided me more than enough to keep the lights on, the refrigerators cold, and the fish happy in their tank. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this generator or what I did in this project, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit that bell for notification. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right down there. Thanks for watching. Data yourself.